Hi everyone, welcome back to the Reload and Closet. This video, I'll be going over priming our brass. So you can see here I have our 50 rounds of brass that has been sized, trimmed, chamfered, deburred, and primer crimp removed. Um, I know in the last video I went through and I found that I actually had some other brass mixed in there. It's not all Lake City. I've actually taken all the ones that are not Lake City out and replaced them with all Lake City brass. So they've all been size chamfer, trimmed, all that good stuff, ready to go. Um, since this is going to be load testing, I just wanted to have all the same brass. Um, so first things first, since we are dealing with primers and explosives, all right, you got to wear your iPro, all right, especially dealing with this stuff. You can get a weird primer, a wonky primer in there. Primer goes off. Um, you always want to be putting it away from you, but you never know. So Always wear your eye pro when dealing with primers and things like that. Okay. So, starting out, we're using Winchester small rifle primers. Um, pick these up off a guy. Had to drive halfway across the state of Georgia to get them, but I got them because right now they're in an extreme primer shortage. So, extreme lengths need to be taken. I got a hell of a deal on them though, plus some bullets, um, which we will be loading into these rounds here so so we're loading 50 rounds so i'll take half a tray all right and then i'll put it into our primer tray this is for the rcbs hand primer um it has a flipper or uh, not a cedar but a, a setter so when you when you get primers um very rarely do they come looking like this? All right, you'll have flipped over ones. All right, they all need to be um, impact side down. Okay, so that way when they get pushed up into the round, um, they're facing the right direction. So how we do this is we take this nice, take us like this, take us over top of the primer tray and flip it. All right, close this box up and we'll set this down real quick. Put the primer back in the box. In the box, I'll put it out of the way. Okay. So we got lucky. We don't have to do any flipping, but if you do have a primer that has the shiny side up, all you gotta do is Give this thing a little shake. Oh, and a couple of them are flipping over there. So there we go. We got one that's flipped over. Beast. Give it a little shake. And they'll all flip back over. All right. So then we'll take our cover. And you'll see it does have an opening. All right. With a gate. All right. That gate is that plastic loan piece there. All right. You put that in front of the chute. Make sure they all stay in the right position. Center it. Press it down. Okay. So there's our primers and our primer tray. So we'll set that to the side. All right. And this is the primer itself. Priming tool. Let's see if I can here. Um, I've always found it a pain when I first started out. I was only doing 300 blackout, so I actually went and got an extra shell holder, okay, because this one does take uh, shell holders. Now, you're, since this is an RCBS tool, you only want to use RCBS shell holders. Uh, I tried using the Hornaday shell holder, and it makes it real tight, and it, it does not work the same. It works, but it, it slows the process down. So you take this out, and that that rod that's in there, you can see the spring around it. Okay, that's what pushes, that's the plunger and pushes the primer up through this mechanism here and into the round. So take this, okay, and our primer slips right over that nipple. Goes just over just like that. And you're gonna want the opening facing out this way, that way it's easier to get the brass in there. So, this goes back into the tool. Okay. Now, you want to 
flip it upside down so the plunger goes all the way back through. And you'll slip your arm into there. All right, then you've got this arm right here. And that comes down. Now there's a little detent in that rod. Push it up into, and then push it all the way closed. And that allows you put that hold and screw, tighten that hold and screw back in there, and you're ready to go. All right. Next, you'll take your primer tray, get it in there nice and snug, and slides in there just like that. Open the door, and you'll tilt it sideways. Look down in there. And you really see, you can barely see that there's a primer in there. All right, so we take our brass, first one up. Now you'll notice as you go to push up on it, okay, it'll snag a little bit. That's that arm catching another primer. So you just bounce it a couple of times and then push through it. Look down in, make sure it's good to go. Put your round in there. All right, you'll feel the pressure and you just push it. All right, double check it. Now your primer seating should be flush. Let's see if I can get the focus here. Yeah, it's not gonna focus. But your primer once will should be flush or slightly set into um, the case head. Just give it a little push, make sure it's seated all the way in, all right? That one went pretty well. And then as I put it back into my loading tray, put a primer side up so I would know that that round has been done. Right, get another one. Got a primer in there. All right, and sometimes you'll catch a little bit of resistance. I just twist the round around a little bit. Make sure it's find that good seating position. Mm -hmm. Boom. Now, if you are doing brass that formerly had a crimp in it, you gotta be a little bit more careful. All right. Um, if you find that you're, you have a primer that's not setting in there, then you wanna just go ahead and uh, get your whatever you're using to remove a crimp, whether it be a reamer or swager, and just go ahead and give it another shot. Um, hit it again with the, with the reamer and get that the primer pocket a little bit more clean and it should seat nicely. So I've done so far. So yes, every once in a while it'll get hung up. You just gotta Um, and as you're seating your primates, if you feel one that just, there's no resistance whatsoever, the primer just goes straight in there, like, you didn't even need the tool to do it, it's probably about time to toss that case. Uh, it means the primer pocket is pretty much worn out and can cause issues, uh, especially if you're in a, an AR, it can cause malfunctions because that primer will blow apart or blow back through your bolt. <laughs> yep, it happens. Um, and can jam, jam the gun. So, all right. And there's all sorts of different priming tools. My press actually has the ability uh, to prime as well. Um, but that's single, your single feeding primers at that point, And it's just, I typically don't like to touch primers. Um, the oils on your hands, if they get into the primer material itself, from what I've read, um, can change the ignition rate or the blast power, whatever have you. I, I just try not to touch the uh, the primers with my bare hands. Come on now. I don't know if I get one that's stubborn.
and the whole idea with a priming tool is don't don't try to force it. If it's not going, then it ain't going. All right, figure out, try to fix whatever the issue is, and don't force it. There's a gentleman on one of the reloading Facebook groups um, just a couple of weeks ago, actually. I was having an issue, and he had felt like a slight resistance and pushed through it, and what had happened is he had a primer that was sideways in his pocket, and um, didn't realize it, and was just gonna. And the he couldn't get the round out of the priming tool because it was sticking out some. So he decided he was just gonna press the primer up into the pocket. That way he could get the round out of the primer holder. Well, he consequently picked up another primer on the downstroke and as he pushed that primer up it hit the other primer and the round blew up in his hand detonated both primers and whatever primers he had in the holder scared the crap out of him did some damage luckily he was wearing his ppe so um his eyes were saved uh, but messing with primers is Primers are the most dangerous uh, tool you'll use while reloading. It's the most sensitive, um, especially if you get a bunch of primers together and you light and one goes off, they're all going off. Um, primers actually have enough pressure that if you look, if you have a bullet seated with just a primer, no powder, and you put it in a gun and fire it, it'll make it a little bit down the barrel. Maybe it'll set into the lands. Maybe me about an inch depending on what kind of primers you're using so primers as small as they may be have a significant amount of power when you hear about reloading accidents and things of that nature it's usually dealing with primers that's why it costs you an extra 20 bucks when you go to ship them just along as well as with gunpowder but um, you got to pay your hazmat shipping when shipping primers too There's a lot of feel to this, all right? It's, it takes time. Uh, if you're just starting out, go real slow. Um, I'm banging these out pretty quick, but I've been doing it for a little bit. And I've got a real good familiar. I know if I feel something, I know what I'm feeling. I've gotten pretty used to using these hand primers. As much as they cramp up your hand, they, they work pretty good. And actually, I kind of like these a little bit better than using your, say, your press. You get a little more feel out of these. You can understand how tight the primer pocket is. Um, with the press, you've got so much leverage. It makes it real easy to, say, you've got a, a sideways primer or um, not necessarily a backwards primer because you really won't feel the difference between those two. I have done that before. Um... You can be extremely cautious and safe and just use your decapping die to push it out. <clears throat> you get a real good feel using one of these versus using the press on how tight your primer pockets are. I'm not saying you don't get a feel when using your press. It's just much easier to feel it with something like this. You want to check also after you've primed, um, you know, look at the edges, of the primer, make sure like a, a, an edge of the primer didn't catch the edge of the primer pocket and you end up with a, a half smash primer, um, that can really cause issues too. Like I said, with a priming tool like this, you typically don't see that because like I said, you just... You get so much feel.
I like kind of putting my brass at an angle. That way, it gives you a better look. Uh, you're going to go through and inspect them, making sure that they're, you didn't miss anything. And those all look pretty good. So, this wraps up the priming video. Real simple. Um, not much to it. Number one thing is just make sure you're being safe, have your eye pro, keeping it pointed in a safe direction, and just trusting your feel. All right. Till next time.